What up, dudes? It's Gaz. And welcome back to another Warframe video. So, DE just dropped a pretty decently sized dev workshop on Comey and the Five Fates, and we'll be going over those quality of life changes that they discussed today. There will likely be more dev workshops in the future, but reminder, we don't have that big dev stream covering these changes until, like, next week. So, yeah, don't expect massive changes or massive information on the, like, pet rework until next week, honestly. So let's get right into it, what we have today, these new player changes, and just basically quality of life across the game. I know this is not going to be really, you know, applicable to a lot of you guys that watch my videos, but uh, it is still good information to have out there either way. And there's not enough, a ton of stuff going on in Warframe right now anyway. All right, so let's get right into their dev workshop they dropped, because, like I said, even if you are a late-game player, some of this stuff might be important to you. All right, so we have the uh, Comey and the Five Fates new player experience and quality of life uh, changes here. Now, if you remember, earlier in the year, they have done a bunch of big quality of life changes to make people, like, not... Basically, to not stop playing the game before they get to, like, late-game or whatever. So they made the Vox Solaris... Uh, and Solaris made massive changes this year. It's so much easier to rank up your uh, your Venus rep now, guys. They also added the Dreamer's Bond Aura mod, which is basically built-in energy regen and HP regen for new players uh, from Junction. They also reduced cra uh, quest crafting build times, reworked the Railjack market bundle, improved Moat Amp acquisition, and, and uh, various quest Junction improvements. So, yeah. Like, these are things that would definitely make people leave the game. Like, oh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. What is an amp? Like, stuff like that. So these already happened, though. Debt bond, drop rate, rework, void rig acquisition, improvements, edit awakening checkpoints, improved resource and blueprint location description, move Daviri to Uranus Junction, and various quest and junction improvements. And also, increased enemy sense on landscapes, rework excavation, objective text, waypoints, and various quest improvements. So all this has already happened, and those are good changes. We've got new changes here that will uh, definitely be noticeable across the game, especially for new players. All right, so let's start with some quest changes here. Uh, when selecting the starter warfare in the Awakening quest, stats will no longer be displayed by default in hovering over the ability section. These stats have been moved to separate tab in this hover pop-up. Uh, the changes to is part of the ongoing effort to elevate critical information for new players while reducing extraneous details to lead to information overload. So yeah, basically if you hovered over Volt, Mag, and Excalibur, it'd be like, okay, here's their base stats. As a brand new, like literally just installed the game player, you don't need to know how much armor Excalibur has, really. It's not going to make a difference to you if Excalibur's got more armor than Mag, because at this, the, the enemies are doing like three damage anyway. So that's probably good. Makes it less confusing for brand new players, not looking at like, okay, well, which one has more armor? I should pick the one with more armor, right? Like, that kind of stuff is just unnecessary at the very, very first click of the game. Reduce the hacking speed puzzle in Awakening and Vor's Prize. So, yeah, if you're having a hard time with that, or maybe, like, you have an old laptop that can't, like, do the FPS or whatever, there you go. That's even easier for the first hacking puzzle of the whole game. Incubating your Kubra and how the Kubra will not only take 60 seconds instead of the original 48 hours. Wow! <laughs> That's a massive difference. 60 seconds from 48 hours. Well, I gotta say, when I was a noob, this was a big problem for me. I, I actually forgot the quest even existed after those hours. So, and I didn't do the how the Kubra for a long time because of this. So, amazing change. Uh, wow. That... This gives me some hope. There will be more quality of life changes in 1999 update. This gives me hope for even bigger changes in those updates. Like maybe even some new like frame slots and stuff for new players. Uh, new player quality of life improvements. This is this is stuff I think might actually influence a lot of people. Unowned mods viewed in the codex will now show their full description and drop locations. So if you didn't know this, that's not how it was right now. It's basically not, not how it is right now. You would go to your um, codex and it's just a bunch of question marks basically. I'm in the ship right now. I can actually show you. Um... It shows you a bunch of question marks in the ship. So it's like, okay, well, that doesn't do me much good. Now we'll show you what the mod does and where the mod comes from in this screen. So if you have, like, some mod that sounds cool you want to acquire, right, like, unowned or something, incomplete might work. Um, so right here, shocking speed. I don't, I mean, I know where shocking speed comes from. I just haven't bothered to, like, hold on to it. I think I sold it or something at some point. Arbiters of Hexus Red Veil. Now in this screen, you will preview it. It will show you all the drop locations and it will show you what the mod does which was just an unnecessary level of, you know, obscurity before. So great stuff there, uh, especially for people that don't know what all these mods do, um, which is probably not a lot of people that watch this channel, to be honest. All right, so let's go over to the next change here uh, as far as what these quality of life changes are. Selling an unmastered item from your inventory will not pop up, uh, display a pop-up message recommending you to level to level 30 or 40 
uh, before it's time to sell it. That wow. Okay, so I can st people come to my ch my channel and my Twitch channel and ask me like, hey, like blah blah blah. How how do I grind MR? I'm like, don't delete it before it's level thirty. Now there's a now there's an in-game notification. Hey, don't delete this before level thirty. Amazing change, and yeah, not everybody realizes this at first. Another method of educating players on their mastery system and helping the new and old players not miss out on stuff. Yeah, this will even affect a high-level player, too. Oh, that Kuva Grattler is level 38. You sure you don't want to finish that last forma? So that kind of stuff. Smart, 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 indeed. Uh, moving on, unlocking an ability will now show the input needed to cast the ability in the ability unlocked pop-up. Now you know what button Tharo Strike will be. Amazing. If uh, a piece of equipment is in a player's loadout has 10 plus unused mod spit capacity in an unused mod slot, a warning symbol will not appear in the loadout section of the navigation streak. This only applies to weapons with 10 to 30 unused mod capacity. It will not appear if you're MR30 or higher. Oh, come on. I don't get my reminder if I'm MR30 or higher. Okay, well, either way, um, if you don't have a full build on your weapon or whatever, it will tell you that in the arsenal screen. I wonder if that's an oh, is it unused mod capacity. So if you don't have an Orican reactor on it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have that much excess mod capacity anyway. So, good stuff just to make sure you don't go to a mission unmodded, basically. Also, uh, MR5 players will see an empty mods pop-up and a hover tooltip to explain the reasons for this icon. That sounds like it might get kind of annoying, at least on that MR5. Now, here's a really good one here. Open landscape maps now feature a legend for the advanced map view and new icons for the extraction points for, like, Cetus and Fortuna. Uh, this... This, different, this is different from war, normal Warframe missions, which can be hard for new players to grasp at first. Sia's Vigil has received changes to re reinforce Enter through Cena's door mechanic and additional stuff changes here. So yeah, as you can see right here, you'll now have a like a legend. Here's the bounty source, and here's like the 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 mother bounty person or whatever. They're gonna mark that on here. They're gonna tell you where the cave entrances are. They're gonna show you where the the actual necrolisk, like how you can leave is. So great stuff. Uh, and, yeah, too bad it wasn't there before, because that would have been really helpful when these new updates come out. Hopefully, if we get any new open worlds, this will be on there at launch as well. To make it really, really straightforward. But yeah, good, really good change there. Um, fish resources descriptions now have been updated to indicate where players can find the fish. Great. Not just, like, the, the lake or the, the, the sea or whatever. Um, okay, so moving on to some other stuff here. Now, when you open up Void Relics, it will tell you if you have this stuff crafted. Uh, not like you can really pick your reward anyway, but it tells you it's good to know. Like, okay, I have Wisp Prime's chassis already built. Good to know that. I don't need to do another Wisp. I can do the Wisp systems now because I do the Wisp chassis. On day one Prime Axis, those are nice. And for new players that don't have everything in the game like us, that's also very, very nice. Players can easily see crafted and own status on these relics. Functionality also applies to the relic reward selection screen upon successfully completing a relic. That's good to know. Hopefully it tells me how many I have still like before. Tano can now favorite their equipment in the arsenal. Um, so before it was like it was sorted by like I think there's various things that sorted by, but you could not favorite things before. Uh, you can make specific mod loadout or uh, build loadouts that you save, but yeah, just showing what they mean now. They mean in this screen right here. Um, yeah, in this screen right here we have the, uh, the normal arsenal screen. So I have to sort it by other form account, name, rank, use. I know usage worked. I guess it's usage on your profile stats. Usage, focus lens, blah, blah, blah. So now you can favorite things, like put like a little heart on the weapon you like. Just like favoriting things on your um, your loadout screen. So you can put stars on the ones you want at the top, and like the ones you don't use as much down there. It will be probably the exact same thing, but for weapons. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah. So let's go over the rest of these changes. There's not too many more changes, just a couple more things here. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. Like, I think all these things, like, they might not be huge changes, but for new players, they're definitely huge. And for late game players, they're still useful. You can favorite Warframes, weapons, cosmetics, and more. Favorite equipment appears at the top of the list in the arsenal, just knowing where they are. Never lose track of Revenant Prime before you, that you love more than others ever again. Revenant Prime? Yeah, I don't play him as much anymore, but he's still good. The Fusion screen has received a refresh to simplify UI elements and bring the fused mod to the forefront. Oh, I'm gonna miss that old screen. That still looks pretty nice, though. Players can now fuse any non-max rank mod via the upgrade screen, so bring the same fusion menu to streamline any changes to make your builds. I feel like someone else wrote these lines than the ones earlier, because they have like little jokes in them. Uh, okay, so th some things that are not default are now mark the diamonds. Wow, they're really, okay, he's really putting some changes in here. I'm, that, that's actually good for me to know, because I actually haven't changed my settings in so long in this game. Purchasing arcanes from a vendor now displays how many arcanes you own per rank. Okay. 
Um, that's a little bit of a weird one. And then that's actually one of the last changes here. Each field icon uh, just represents one rank, and that is not very important. Looking forward, if you've offered advice for new players, uh, asked questions about what to do next in game, shared feedback, blah, blah, blah. Um, you, you have helped us further refine our new player experience. They're also be trying to improve more codexes in the quest, like uh, Clue Distinguished Story, War from Inside Quest. Um, adding small narrative int introductions to planets and their assassination targets as they move th through the star chart. That's good. I want some more world building as I go through these star chart missions because there's not really a ton that goes... It's like, you just basically run through, kill all the Grenier, and go to the next planet, like our next mission. There's really not much like individual like lore on each planet of each mission. And I kind of wish there was, honestly. Like If you went to like Mariana on Earth and you're like, okay, this is the only... Uh, the only subterranean lab on Earth. Why is there one sub subterranean lab on Earth? Like, you know, like, I, I want to know more about what happened there and why that is that mission. There, the real reason is there, there is no real reason. It's just, that's how it is. But, like, imagine you were going to, like, it's like there, Mariana had a story. Uh, Mantle had a story. Gaia had a story. All these nodes actually were important missions, not just the nodes you complete to go to the next planet, basically. So... I, they're definitely not doing that, but it sounds like they're putting like little narrative stuff sprinkled in here to make the boss fights a little bit more uh, exciting, hopefully. So that's pretty cool. And that's basically all the new player quality of life changes in that patch or that hotfix, guys. Uh, or not hotfix, the dev workshop that will be in the Five Fates of Comey update in like two weeks, probably. Two or three weeks. So that's gonna be basically it for the video. Um, some good stuff for sure. The biggest changes to me are gonna be the. Um, I think it might be the, the, the legend on the UI, and also uh, being... Actually, these aren't really changes for me, honestly. These are changes for people that aren't fully mastered out. This one right here, the whole, like, you have not leveled this thing to 30 yet, are you sure about that? That is that is really, really good. Um, some of this other stuff, like, that's nice for me, but, um, yeah, the biggest thing, I think, is this right here. Hey, if you delete that, you're not going to... You're not going to be happy about how to get the Zoras back. Are you sure about that? So yeah, really good stuff there, and a really good, a really good uh, dev workshop for an upcoming patch. So I'll see you guys next one. Take uh, appreciate the support. Take it easy. Peace.